Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. Welcome to another tip video. This one will be specifically about camping and your tents. So I'm going to do some of the tips from here at home in the backyard and the rest of the tips will be from out in the bush. If you just bought a new canvas tent or a swag or whatever it is, if it's made out of canvas, you want to seal it, you want to weatherproof it, the best way to do it naturally, so you don't have to go and buy these um, special coat, coatings in a spray can you put on them. I've tried them, I don't really think they work too well and they kind of got a bit of a smell to it. I would leave this outside for a week in the rain and when the sun and then the rain, with the sun and then the rain, it, it contracts and expands, contracts and expands and these gaps in the canvas become tighter and it just, it won't leak. It becomes pretty much waterproof or weatherproof, I should say. Another way you can do it as well, if, it, if it's in summer, get your garden hose out, hose it down, give it a good soak, come back later, give it another soak when it's dry and that's another way to do it as well. If this is the first time you're ever setting up a tent, do it at home or at a park in a controlled environment so you know what the hell you're doing when you come out here. Now, Brian has used this tent before, but it's been a while, eh? Yeah, it has been a while. Probably like six months or maybe a year since he's used it. Uh, he can't. two years. Two years, he says. He can't quite remember how this goes up, so we've been here for ages trying to do this. So this corner here, this is my dome swag kind of thing you can call it. This thing is so easy to set up. It's got two poles, not complicated. Uh, I did in fact set this up at home in the backyard first to try it out. So always set your tent up at home or at the park before you head out to camp. All right, so now I know how to set it up. So if I rather camp in the dark, which I normally do quite regularly, um, I've got a fair idea how to set it up now because I've set it up in my backyard. Tip number two about a new swag. Check the kind of pegs they come with. Usually, whatever brand you get, they usually come with useless pegs. Now these don't look too bad, but they're fairly short. So I'm going to take my pegs from my old swag, which I also replaced with longer ones, and I'm gonna bring them along with this kit here. And check your guide ropes too, if you think you've got enough or if you want to bring some more replacements. And work out where these actually are meant to go. I've got a few on here on the edges that I'm guessing will just make it more taut, probably prevent the wind from flapping it too much. So figure out why you have so many pegs as well and figure out if you actually have any spare left over. Now, of course, overcomplicated tents and time-consuming tents are okay, but only if you're gonna stay somewhere for quite a while. So, say two, three days, yeah, it's worth doing it. Otherwise, <laughs> when you're out here, out in the outdoors, there is another thing you need to think about when you place your tent. And that is where the sun is rising and where it's setting. Now, not so much where it's setting, but more where it's rising. If you want to sleep in, perhaps put your swag on the other side of your vehicle or your tent, or maybe up against the tree line, so you're blocking the morning sun. That way, you get to sleep in a bit more. Also, you're not going to wake up due to the heat. And even with a swag, with a light-coloured swag canvas, the light will still come through. And especially with these bigger tents, the light will just come right through and these big tents heat up straight away. So keep that in mind where the sun rises. Here are some examples of the sunlight factor. John Swag, it has this silver cover on top of it. He says even if it's broad daylight, light does not come through here at all because he's got this cover on. With mine on the other hand, I am in a good spot away from the sun, which is that swag down the back there. But because it's given the light colour of the material of the canvas, the light really comes through. And the worst of all is where we've placed the big orange tent. That is in the worst spot for sunlight. But sometimes you can't help where you're going to put your tent. 
big tent versus small tent. Yeah, sure, you can get in here, you can stand up, you can store way more stuff, but the amount of time it takes to set up, and you're not gonna spend your time in the tent anyway. You come out here to spend time in the outdoors. Small tent. Now, if you can get a tent that doesn't peg down at all, or even just a small tent that's got two pegs that hold it down, you can just move it. Now I've decided I don't want my tent out anymore. I'm gonna move into the shade. Home sweet home. Also with smaller tents, you can get them into smaller areas. Um, and with the bigger tents, you're limited to room. So smaller tents, more options. Bigger tents, more room inside, but less options of where to place it. And when you've got those real long poles that are two, three meters long, they're also a pain to set up if you're in a tight quarters. So keep that in mind too. You can smell it. I'm here with John and we're talking about some bad smells you used to have in, in the swag. I'm not sure if it was because of a bit of a fart bag in there or, <laughs> but I think it was a common problem with some of these swags. They had a really horrible smell. Yeah, I all have, yeah. Yeah, but you, yeah. you fix it by... Yeah, my wife said, you know, why not try vinegar? So we put some white vinegar in a spray bottle and sprayed it inside and let it dry. And I haven't had any smell since. Okay, how long did you let, let it dry for? You just let it dry for about half a day. Half a day? Yeah. There you go. You have a stinky canvas tent or a swag. Use some white vinegar. White vinegar in a spray bottle. Now, of course, place your tent in a spot where there's no ants or away from an ant's nest, not directly on top of an ant's nest, but it's not always possible because sometimes there's just ants everywhere. You can be away from the nest, but they might still be walking around. You can get some low irritant uh, surface spray. And what I do, and what the other guys do too, they spray the zipper on their tent and just the base of their tent with a bit of, um, it's, like, it's like a bit of a surface barrier and it stops them from climbing on your tent or getting in there. So that's another good one. Another tip for you, this one's about zippers. Now this little hiking tent here, there we go, it has really small zippers. What I have here is a key ring. And I'm going to put this key ring onto the zipper. And now, it's much easier to use. Here's another example of a zipper fix. Bit of a different type of cable tie here, I guess it is, because the zip broke off. But you could also use a bigger key ring for that too. So, or a cable tie. And one more zipper tip. WD-40 will really help you out, especially with these older tents or even these awnings that have seen many days out in the bush, all the dirt, all the grime. WD-40 sorts it right out. Well, I hope you found those tips useful and thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more tip videos, check out these two down here. And if you want to support the creation of this kind of content, you can head to patreon.com slash Ronnie Thanks again. Do subscribe. See you later.